Billericay Town was a team with former Premier League stars, a state-of-the-art new stadium and a multi-millionaire owner. So how did the club end up just weeks away from liquidation? We've travelled to the new lodge to find out how the club survived. Billericay Town became one of the most famous football clubs in non-league when their owner slash manager slash motivational speaker caused a media frenzy with his pre-match sing-songs. I think you'll have a sing song. This caught the headlines of Sky Sports and we even came down here to the stadium and filmed a You Know The Drill. On the pitch, they had former Premier League players such as Jamie O'Hara, Kev Foley, Paul Koncheski and Jermaine Pennant. Off the pitch, the stadium has had a bit of a reefer. We've got the covered terraces. We've got the stand that's now got seats all the way along the side of the pitch. And of course, the famous mural on the back of the Glen Templin stand. Inside the changing room, the walls were decorated with lions after Glen gave a speech about this place being the jungle or something like that. Unfortunately though, that has been painted over with a lovely colour of original blue. There's also a Billericay first team responsibility board and the club's expectations plastered around the room. If you're wondering what they're listening to right now, it's hot chocolate, you sexy thing. I'm not even joking. The tunnel area used to look like this, but now it's like this. So this is the famous mural which tells the story of the club's history from left to right. We've got some BTFC legends as well. I have no idea how long this took, but imagine the artist doing this. The club was founded in 1880, and I'll tell you about the ship a little bit later on. Then there were the glory years, winning the FA Vars three times in a row. Then it all went a bit Pete Tong, as the fans hoped for better times. This image of the owner in bed was a symbol of the message he believed he received. However, that's been painted over now. This is the fun part. Can any non fans work out who that is? We'll reveal all at the end of the video. Finally, we have Harry Parker on the left, the current crest and the club's achievements on a scroll. Speaking of the crest, the Mayflower ship represents the four or five passengers from Billericay who went on the voyage from Plymouth to America in 1620. Under Glen's reign, the club was very successful, but the journey was definitely a roller coaster. In September 2019, he decided to step down as owner. This is Kim. She's a legend. She worked for Glen and tells us how much he did for her. So working for Glen, um, he gave me a purpose, obviously because I've uh, just been made redundant had a couple of bereavements. He allowed me to run the club for him and I absolutely loved it, really. And I did so for other owners as well. What does Billericay Town mean to you? It means a lot. Just simple, it means a lot. A new beginning was on the horizon as a new consortium managed to save the club's existence. They cracked on and started fixing all the previous issues. They swapped grass for a 3G all-weather pitch plus a second pitch behind the stadium for all ages to enjoy. This is probably more my level now. Fast forward to this season, there's a brand new squad ready to chase the Ithmian Premier League title under the guidance of the brilliant Gary McCann. There might not be any ex-Premier League players in this squad, but we wanted to know who the most famous player these guys have played with. Played Declan Rice at West Ham, under 18s and under 23s as well. He was actually playing centre back at West Ham. Obviously, he's playing midfield now, but yeah, he was uh, very good. Oh, yes, a lot. That's a lot. Probably James Madison right now. Where'd you play with him? Norwich and Leicester. How good was he? Unreal. <laughs> Unreal. To put a ball wherever he wants to. I'd probably say Vardy. Yeah, yeah it's a good one. You in the youth team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the academy, so I trained with him and then in the pre season. Pre-season game one time. It's movement, everything, pace, so quick. Famous player, I've never played with him. Probably had it as he's. <laughs> probably had it as he's. I train with Matt O'Reilly, who's at Celtic. In a game, probably Don Fanleco, that Don's now. I don't know about the biggest, but a rogue one was Frank Widrow. Frank Widrow, <laughs> he. Left uh, back. Yeah, the left back. He came on loan from Birmingham at Colchester back in the day. Lovely guy, strange character that loved his cars. I was fortunate enough to be in a, a couple of world squads with the likes of Aaron Ramsey and, and Joe Allen and, and all of that. Yeah, so I'll probably say them. Danny Green is assistant manager who has previously played for the likes of Charlton, MK Dons and Luton. So we asked him the exact same question. I was at MK Dons with Dele Alli, outstanding young player. The best player I played against, Moussa Dembele for Fulham. He was unbelievable, yeah, he was unbelievable. I was at Charlton at the time, we had an FA Cup game against Fulham. 
and he was just he was unplayable. He was, he was a joke. Yeah. How are you finding coaching? Really enjoying it. Really enjoying it. Um, his body enjoys it more as well now, so I'm not as tired. It's another passion. So I love I love football. Football's everything. So the next step for me was to go into coaching, and, and I love what I do here. Uh, love working with young kids. I work with young kids during the day, and then the adults uh, side of it as well. He's saying I want to get into a lot more and, and passionate about that. So yeah. And this is Tom Bender, the Colchester Academy product who has lived every young kid's dream, representing his country at football. What was it like going on international duty? Unbelievable, unbelievable. There was an element of it feeling like a holiday. We were lucky enough to go to some really nice places, but just being able to represent the country. Going out there, my, my family came with me a lot uh, and they followed me around Europe and uh, just being able to make them proud and, and just stand there when the national anthem's playing and captain them and scoring for your country and that, it's just unbelievable. And you've played in the Football League, you've played non-league, what's the biggest difference for you? In terms of the players, I'd say the consistency. You, you see players in non-league, technical ability is, is unbelievable. A lot of them, it's, it's just consistency. You, you see in the Football League that the mistakes that they make still happen in non-league, but I'd just say they're just more frequent in non-league. And when, when teams and players in the Football League get their chances, they punish you more often than not, whereas in non-league, the lower you go down, you might get away with it a little bit more. They're not the only big hitters who have graced this pitch. Randomly, Liam Payne used it for some soccer aid training and Anton Deck, Saturday night takeaway filmed at the new lodge. Jordan North with the hosting duties. As the players warm up went up a notch, our attention turned to the gaffer, Gary McCann. Gary, how much are you enjoying the challenge at Billericay? Different type of challenge, but yeah, enjoying it immensely. A proper football club, proper ambition, proper infrastructure. There's no question that uh, you know they're geared for the next level or maybe the next level above. So enjoying that, embracing it, making adjustments myself because of obviously the previous clubs I've been at. But yeah, it's uh, it's been an enjoyable start. Yourself and the club have shown commitment because you've signed a three-year contract. It's quite yeah. rare in non-league, isn't it? Yeah, it's a three-year program as such. You know, when I sat down with the board, I think there's you know there's ambition within the club for immediate success, but there also there is some long-term goals and. You know, they understand that the process of getting promotion doesn't op happen overnight, especially not with 16, 17 new signings. So, you know, the, 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 you know, the project is very much to make sure we uh, deliver promotion in a couple of years if we can, but we're geared to try and get it done this year, obviously. And finally, what's your style of play? We saw you at Hampton and Richmond. What's it like here? Very similar. I think that's me. I've got all action. You know, I want to play with energy, want to play with tempo, counter-pressing style. We want them to be expressive in the final third, but show good reaction if there's any failure. So, you know, front foot football, you know, and I think that's very much what most teams have, uh, you know, within their uh, setup now. So, yeah, it's very much ours. We also had a very quick peek inside the manager's office. Gary mentioned how good the facilities are here and the clubhouse is spot on. It's a perfect place to watch the early kickoff and catch up with some pals. Plus, if you're feeling extra fancy or celebrating a birthday, why not purchase hospitality tickets, which come with a private table, a padded seat and a sensational view. Travelling boardroom staff are well looked after by the lovely staff. There's a gentle reminder of the club's successes and the biscuits are double decent. It's time for everyone's favourite non-league food review. And this one is very special. Can we have a look at this? Can we get in here? Got the double patty, double cheese, topped off with a bit of mustard. And we all know you cannot go wrong with a brioche bun. So this has set me back 8.50 with the chips, with a cup of tea. I think that's awesome value. I'm going to give it a try. And then I think we're going to give it a name that fans have to use from now on. I won't accept any other name. Can we just talk about how soft this burger is? A brioche bun's always going to do that, but the patties oh, just melt in your mouth. This is phenomenal. Right, I've had a taste and we've come up with a name. It's the Billericay Banger Burger. I mean, I think it warrants its name. It's absolutely brilliant. From now on, the Billericay Banger Burger. Back on the pitch, the players were going through some final pass and move routines, then everyone stuck on their shooting boots for some quick fire shots against goalkeeper Stefan, who had his work cut out. To be honest, I was knackered watching it myself. Steph, you've just been in goal for about 15 minutes of players just smashing balls at you. How are you feeling? Blowing. <laughs> oh, absolutely blowing. What's it like for a goalkeeper in that drill? It's just up and down, up and down. You don't get no time to react. It's literally get up, make the save, get up, try again. But it's all worth it. Today's game is huge. After the disappointment of missing out on reaching the first round of the FA Cup following a penalty shootout defeat to Sheppey United earlier in the week, the defeat hurt even more when Sheppey drew Walsall at home in the next round, which will be shown live on the telly. However, the club are looking to bounce back today with three points against Hastings. As kickoff was fast approaching, the... Ricky! 
Fans took their seats, but behind the away goal, it was about to kick off. Here come the teams for this Ithmian Premier League match between Billericay and Hastings. By the way, this is Bradley Stevenson, and I have it on good authority that he is an absolute baller. The final word, though, goes to club captain Matt Johnson. Right, first 20 minutes, get at them. Ask questions, you two. See what they've got, yeah? We had to wait until the second half for the opening goal. Lovely work from Bradley Stevenson down the right-hand side, who cut it back for the captain, Matt Johnson, to make it 1-0. The Hastings fans were still in good voice. <laughs> as were Billy Ricky. The same duo combined for the second, Stevenson with the corner, and Johnson tucked it away for all three points. The promotion charge is en route. Right, time to reveal the famous face on the mural. It is, of course, James Corden. 